All right, so the key keeper and I are goofing around with a spotlight tonight, and he's picking his nose with a dowel rod. He's such an amusing fellow. I've got no dash. Something <laughs> else went wrong in the key keeper's big brown piece of junk. Imagine that. His headlights turned into delayed action lights. You could turn the switch on. Frequently, you'd hear some evidence of electrical arcing. Well, it turns out that um, since 1994, that switch has turned those headlights on and off a lot of times. And GM chose to route all 10,000 amps and 12 volts of the headlight system right up to that switch. So that switch is switching the full current of the headlights. That takes its toll on a cheaply engineered switch, and that's what's happened here. All right, so now what we have here, this is the um, instrument panel shroud out of the truck. Now, what I can tell you right now is that if you take this out of your own truck, your 94 or similar vintage Chevy, you will be careful with it or you will be buying another one and you will be forking over something to a junkyard or about $65 to General Motors. Because these two wizards, when they were young, they got to goofing around in a parking lot when that truck was new. Surely not. Yeah, I know. Perish the thought, <laughs> huh? And they pushed the headlight switch back into the dash, which underscores the fragility of these two screw holes right here. They are extremely easy to strip and crack out because this is cheap plastic. I believe it's a type of plastic called Noryl. N-O-R-Y-L. Okay. And it's very, very cheap except when you have to buy it from General Motors. <laughs> but here's the switch and here's what's slowly gone wrong over the years. You can see that all that copper in there is kind of discolored. The switch came apart without undue violence. Although the same thing applies to this. It's made of fragile, cheap plastic. That's the dimmer wheel that's still in there. And the dimmer wheel seems to be okay. You'll notice there's a heat sink on the dimmer wheel because the dimmer wheel is nothing more than a sliding contact running against silk screened on resistor material. Very cheap, very effective, but also horribly inefficient and so it generates a lot of heat and hence the reason for a heat sink. But the keykeeper has already taken the liberty of shining up these main contacts here, which is not a bad idea. And now we've got to try and fix this, rather than pay GM about $3 million for a new switch. So the way we've decided to do this is the same way that I worked on that Dayton furnace fan motor from so long ago. We've got some sheets of sandpaper here. This is fairly aggressive sandpaper, 40 grit aluminum oxide, which is actually a pimple remover substitute. <laughs> and then we have these popsicle sticks and the good hot glue gun, the fancy one that's still got the trigger on it that I haven't managed to drop on the floor yet and break the trigger off of it. And we have a sewing machine, which its purpose is unknown, but I'm sure we'll work it into this somehow. <laughs> anyway, what I'm going to do is cut out little pieces of sandpaper, make some sanding sticks, and uh, we're going to make a sanding dowel rod. There's a joke about handling a rod in there, but I'm not going to make it because I'm going to take the high road here. <laughs> anyway, we're going to try to sand these up and clean them up and buy this poor little switch a little more time. Okay, so what we have here is the results of cleaning off the first contact. A bunch of burnt residue and some grease. Okay, so after a lot of work and a few sanding sticks, what we have here is a freshly cleaned up headlight switch for the Key Keeper's Big Brown 1994 piece of crap. Yeah! He's absolutely thrilled by this. Now this thing down here, as it turns out, this appears to be the circuit breaker that causes your headlights to go out in the middle of an abandoned country road and the deer to think that it's safe to cross. That actually appears to be a bimetallic strip that if too much current was being drawn, it would back off from that copper pad over there and cut power to the headlights just in time to avoid a fire and make sure that you hit a deer or crash into a road sign. <laughs> <laughs> Hope not. But now I think we're ready to put everything back together and go out to the truck and actually give this a try. Or we will be as soon as I can put some anti-oxidation compound on those terminals and we can slip that thing back together. Okay, there's the completed switch put all the way back together, got the contacts all cleaned up on it, got it working again. Now all we have to do is go out and hook it up in the keykeeper's big brown piece of junk, and we'll see what happens. Alright, now there's the switch back in place. 
back wired up at least. We don't have everything in place just yet. We won't have any panel lights because the key keeper still got the uh, dimmer wheel out of circuit there. But when I turn this on, I want to have some parking lights. We got some parking lights. You can probably see those out there. And if we turn both on, I ought to have some headlights. And we've got headlights basically just about instantly. Got our high beams, got our low beams. So this silly little switch, hold that light up here, this silly little switch is fixed. Yay! Now we can put the dash back together. Alright, here's the dimmer wheel. Now I have the key keeper kill the spotlight there. And when I fade this up, there's our instrument panel lights. And if you hold in the dome switch over there, I'll be able to turn the dome light on. Yep, there it is. Just absolutely beautiful. So everything that this truck had wrong with it is now fixed for the moment. Yeah. All right.